This is Warriors Anonymous. Yeah, welcome along to Warriors Anonymous. We really shouldn't call it Warriors Anonymous, to be fair. This is the crossover event of the year, my God, people. Brace yourselves. This is Warriors Anonymous meets Ruin Hammer. So, guys, I can't imagine uh, how everyone's feeling. I'm feeling excited. I need some, uh, I feel like we need some sort of intro kind of lighting sort of stuff for like, you know, like at the Warriors games to, 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 to get it all going. But uh, my name is Jared Cronin. Let's bring in the lads. First of all, obviously, you know the Sauce Boys, Moneta Sauce, Isaac, Sostradamus. Uh, and we've also obviously got the lads as well featuring on this episode, we've got Ruin Hammer. Boys, welcome along. Thank you for joining us. What a what a great time to be chatting to you about the Warriors, because man, it's uh, it's it's been quite a run of results. Close shave on Friday, but um, Ru, Ru, what was uh, what was going through your mind? Uh, you know, in the closing stages of Friday night. <laughs> it, it's it's funny because during the last few minutes of that game, I was having internet issues, and it kept buffering and kept spinning. <laughs> And, it, and I had to go keep going back and hitting live on my KO. But, um, yeah, I, it, it, was, it was one of those games where we were, we were so good for about 78 minutes. And I'm just like, we just can't afford to let them get one more to give them a sniff because it's a modern game and teams can score tries so quickly. But I'm like, oh, yeah, but this is a different team this year. It wouldn't happen again, surely. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, like... They got that try, and then from the kickoff, I, I, yeah, I just couldn't believe it. It was like almost a throwback to that that final game last year against the Titans, where we coughed up like a a fourteen point lead in about three minutes. Yeah. But um, yeah, so so it goes. Uh, and the other thing is, Jared Croker has tormented us for years. <laughs> How many hat tricks has that bloke scored against us? Seriously, I'm like, here we go. He's going to get his payback for us ruining his three hundredth game, and he's just just going to slot it from the chalk as Graham Hughes would say, and uh, win the game. But, yeah, thank God there was a bit of a there was a bit of a breeze there and uh, he didn't have his kicking boots on, but, yeah, unreal. But, yeah, like we, we go into Golden Point and there was that fantastic first set and, you know, and you wouldn't believe it. Again, I had buffering issues right on about tackle four in that final set. And then I'm like, what's going on? And then my phone rings and I'm like, that can, and it's Hammer on the other end, like that can only be good news. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so that's how that's how the final few minutes unfolded for me. But yeah, um, yeah, unreal. Like it, just so many mixed emotions. In many ways, I'm still processing it in my head. <laughs> um, and the next day, I was just like, I, I know we won, but it just doesn't. Yeah, it's just it's just a strange feeling. But yeah, but uh, all in all, overjoyed to get the win and to consolidate that spot in the, the top four. Yeah, it was mm. it was such a funny one, eh? Um, oh, I, I, yeah. I I still have the. Uh, I have almost the overriding feeling of being angry at the Corey Horsburgh thing, and I could just mm. I couldn't let go of it, even though we won the game. I was like, he should have been <laughs> done, but uh, but bro, Hammer, um, that was yeah, that, that was a pretty crazy sort of game. And uh, is that is it true that do you only call Rue when it's good news, and if if not, <laughs> what, what what happens if it's bad news? <laughs> no, we we actually have a have a little chat group that we we chat non-stop during the game uh but we we chat like we ring each other after every game but um yeah i i yeah. we don't normally ring right on full time so me ringing him right after johnson had nailed that field goal he was two minutes behind the first thing he said to me is don't tell me i'm, I'm not i'm not up to where you're up to <laughs> so so i i sat on the phone silently while he had to watch the last minute play out and uh yeah and then he started cheering so but I nice. said to him, it was one of those all, games all well where, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's one of those games where, like, we've got we've got a run of games coming up that, um, when you look at them, they're they're teams that are all below us on the on the ladder, and it's games that we're probably expected to win. So this was a game that uh, against the Raiders, where you know they were in uh, ahead of us on the ladder, we got to jump them by winning the game, um, but it was probably the kind of game that we needed to play as well, where it was a tough contest. Uh, we kind of got out to a lead. That that came back. They got it equal to us. And we kind of had to reset and go again. And Warriors teams of the past have never been able mm. to do that. Um, so heading into this last stage of the of the competition and then into the finals, uh, I think it was a good little tester for us um, just to see, 
you know, we talk about the resilience that the team has got, and we've seen that defensively, but to, to have the resilience to be able to back up, reset uh, when things weren't going their way, and then get the win at the end uh, was probably a good sign uh, for us. And really odd for Warriors fans to be talking about stuff like that, because <laughs> we, we haven't been able to talk about stuff like that for years. Yeah, no, for sure. And it, it really was. Um, I was so getting, it was PTSD had set in. Still from that Titans game at the end of last yeah, yep. year, and I was like, it's happening again. And I remember as soon as that game finished against the Titans, I just got up, turned off the TV, and just went for a walk with the dog. Didn't even say a word, just left. <laughs> it was just like, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> but boys, uh, before we even get into the real nitty-gritty of uh, of the game uh, and, and the Warriors' yep. season, um, there's a couple of things I wanted to just you know, bring up with you. Uh, first of all, Netflix has brought a, a new series called Quarterback around NFL quarterbacks. So I thought for yep. our short ball segment, we could do uh, a quick little go around from you fellas um, and just see if Netflix was to do an NRL equivalent, i.e. halfbacks, uh, which three halfbacks we'd all choose and, and why as well, uh, I guess, if, if you want to share as, as well. Um, so we'll start with you, Saucy, bro. Uh, who would you have as your three NRL halfbacks on the next uh, Netflix series. Oh, yeah. Um, I think you have to have a really good spectrum of halfbacks. You can't just have all champion halfbacks. So I was thinking one, like a, a journeyman kind of guy like um, Carl Flanagan. You know, he's had a rough time. He keeps nice. trying to make it. He never, he's, he's still pushing, but he never seems to quite cement his spot. So the trials and tribulations of a player in his position. Uh, then you'd have SJ, just because mm -hmm. I'm biased, and good, <laughs> I good. just want to hear yep. his story. But he has been through the wars as well, you know, leaving the Warriors acrimoniously, come, going to the Sharks, coming back, not having the best run until this year. And then probably someone at the top of his game, like Nathan Cleary as well, he'd kind of be your, uh, I don't know, the what's the, what's the word? The, for me, the bad guy, the antagonist of the show, <laughs> just because he's playing for the top team, the Glamour Club, he's just amazing. He's probably a little bit, I don't know, the Penrith team seems arrogant to me, so I thought there'd be a good mixture of players <laughs> to have in the, the quarterback series for the NRL. Nice. I like that. I like that spectrum. I'm, I'm similar to yours, mm -hmm. bro. I went Cleary, uh, Sean, mm -hmm. uh, and I went um, Isaiah Gatoa from the Dolphins. I thought those three would be a good sort of look across. Moneta, who are your three, bro? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have to say Sean Johnson. That's the obvious one because uh, of Warriors. But um, for some reason, I was thinking Todd Carney. Back in the day, he got into a lot of trouble. So just be good to sit behind the scenes of some of the stuff that really... <laughs> See what really <laughs> happened in the toilets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah what, what about out of um, out of current ones, bro? And lean, lean forward a little bit as well, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I just thought of it when I've been acting Cleary, just, um, you know, his father, you know, playing for the Warriors and just how there was kind of a, could have been something that he could have been playing for the Warriors. So could have been. <laughs> in that journey, yeah. <laughs> nice, man. Rue, who's your three, bro? Yeah, like you guys, I'd have SJ. Um, yeah, something's obviously working for him this year. Being back home, he just looks happy. Everything's going right with him um, off the field and it's translated obviously on field so I'd, I'd yeah love to see you know, a snapshot into how he goes about his his business especially at the moment um the other one i had i, I had uh adam reynolds he's like a, yeah. a consummate professional and to see how he um, prepares for a game and sort of what goes on in his world as well and then and then the opposite end of the spectrum i'd say luke brooks because i would love to see the complete polar opposite of that the bloke who's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. Uh, he's played first grade for about a decade and he's never played finals. And it'd be interesting to see just the comparison, see how he he prepares, he goes about his business. So I thought I thought that would be um, that would be a bit of a different one. Yeah, those are some beauties. I like those, especially Luke Brooks. That'd be uh, that'd be must watch. Um, Hammer bro, who are your three? Uh, like you guys, uh, SJ's got to be in there. Um, he's returned to New Zealand. It was the final year of his contract coming into. Uh, this year, uh, he's had a return to form. Obviously, there's been the stuff off the field has been really working well for him to, to get him playing good on the field. So I think it would have been good to have a look at that. Um, I, suppose, I I thought Sean O'Sullivan 
Um, he's a guy that's been like, he was a backup at the Roosters, a backup at the Broncos, he was a backup at the Warriors and then the Panthers. And now he's, he's that number one man at the, at the Dolphins. Um, he's, you know, the first choice halfback. Uh, it's a new, uh, franchise. Um, so he's kind of the guy that's got to lead them around. So I thought he, that would be an interesting one. And the last one I picked was Nico Hines, uh, reigning Dalian medalist. Oh, yeah. uh, be good to see like the pressure that, that that kind of carries into the following season. And then you've got all the off-field dramas that he's got going on as well with his mum having been uh, jailed and now living with him. Um, and, you know, the mm. Sharks being that team that's under immense pressure uh, can't beat a top eight side and have, have been labelled as flat track bullies of, you know, all those teams in the bottom eight. Uh, so I thought he'd be an uh, interesting one to look at as well. That's a good one. Yeah, there's some, there'd be some juicy, you know, personal storylines going on for uh, poor old Nico um, with, with all that stuff that he's had going on, on top of the whole, you know, everyone talks about the origin whole schmozzle, mm. but um, he's got a lot of things on his plate, the poor young fella. But um uh, I, I like those. Uh, I like those options across the board. There's some really good stuff there. Uh, there's um, uh, you fellas may have uh, may have noticed as well over the past couple of weeks. Um, we put out a um, a bit of a song called "Up the Wars," so uh, which has apparently been going pretty well um, over in New Zealand, allegedly. Um, kind of hard to tell from over here, but uh, there's been some uh, some pretty good feedback. There's been um, a few of the radio stations have been uh, been sharing it around. Um, Shout outs from The Rock and My FM, SENZ, of course, they played and had a bit of a laugh. Um, the Matt and Jerry show for Radio Hauraki as well. Um, thanks to them. Also, um, New FM, um, I'm going to be chatting to them, um, this coming Tuesday, uh, about the, um, about the song and just about, yeah, uh, the, the Warriors Anonymous stuff and, and everything uh, that's going on. Um, it's, uh, it's for the Nguyen, um, Nguyen language show. So I don't actually speak any Nguyen, but I obviously am, uh, uh part Nguyen. So I'd, I'd like to, uh, <laughs> like to reconnect, uh, with, you know, with my culture. Um, also, oh, I need to share this as well. Yep. Uh, this is, uh, this is a bit of gold here. Um, I'll just bring this up again. Uh, uh this is again, uh, back to the, uh, the track. Had, uh, I haven't had much, um, experience, um, uh, with, uh, TikTok or anything like that, but the old, uh, We've actually had people sharing stuff. <laughs> oh, oh wow! Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> people have been dancing away and and playing the song and making their little remixes and stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, this is uh, something oh, wow. that I never really saw coming. But uh, but really cool, you know, like cool that um, people are you know really embracing it. Uh, some people hate it, but that's all good. Viral. Um, yeah, bro, it's, uh, <laughs> it's it's crazy. It's weird, but um, uh, but all good at the same time. Um, now. On to uh, more pressing matters. Uh, we went into Friday night's game against the Raiders. They came over to yep. Go Media Stadium. And uh, before we even kicked off, guys, how good was that intro? The team coming out. Um, I, was, I was blown away because oh, I'd you know, been out to Parramatta a couple of weeks ago. And they've got a pretty awesome pregame, the lights and the music going on. You feel like you're at a basketball game. But what they did at... Go Media Stadium. Isaac, I thought that may actually be top tier in the NRL at the moment. That was amazing. That was... Uh, yep. <laughs> pretty interesting. I'm not used to seeing that sort of thing with the Warriors. You kind of get used to the whole tunnel. It's a traditional thing. They run out of there. Fireworks. But I'm all on board for it. The light show was pretty amazing. I'd hate to be peeking and watching that at the same time and your eyeballs will be bugging out of your head. But you know, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I wonder about the players coming out, Rue, if they can actually even see properly when they're coming out with all the smoke going on and the lights. <laughs> Seeing the green green dots in front of their eyeballs when they're on the field, eh? It's just like those lights were too powerful. Oh, Catch absolutely. a laser right in the eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, really, really impressive. I love the, um, I don't know about you boys, but I got a little bit worried initially when they switched off all the lights and i was like oh no <laughs> oh we've yeah, had no, power, that. Power, power outage yep <laughs> yeah. uh -oh. genesis who energy fuck who hasn't paid the bill gosh uh but then obviously you know we got into the game um and yeah rue we we started off on fire bro uh we, we had a nice start um how did you see that opening sort of sequence uh, for the warriors yeah look we, we sort of picked up where we left off got a got an early try um, and yeah, sort of really got on top. But then it's been a little bit of a theme in, in the last few weeks. We have this period, like a short period where we start to lose our way a little bit. And I think after that quick start, 
for me, we kind of, yeah, we, we, I don't know what it was, the intensity dropped off or something like that, but we, we seemed to struggle a little bit after that. And then we were under, under a bit of pressure ourselves, a lot of defensive pressure. Um, but yeah, no, a good start. Um, nice little try there. Came pretty, came pretty easy as well. So it was good to yeah. see, good to see that. Good to see new caught air back from uh, suspension, yeah. well, at least for a little while, um, till he uh, <laughs> got the old head, not <clears throat> poor guy. But um, um, yeah, re- really good to see. Also, um, Hammer, bro, the that right oh. edge attack, that is, it's looking deadly. It can kill teams in any number of ways with any different option outside Sean at the moment. How are you seeing that? Well, the, the beauty that we got, we've got it's not only our right edge, it's our left edge as well. Um, you know, you got you got Jackson Ford on the left edge. You got Nia Corey over on that right edge, and um, I thought Rocco Berry. Um, he's a he's a player that we've spoken about many times on our show about how we were kind of disappointing with disappointed with how he hadn't really come on. But last week against the Sharks, it was like his um, he, he, he everything just clicked for him, and he backed it up again with another good performance uh, on the weekend against the Raiders. Mm. Um, came up with a great try assist for. Uh, Montoya, I think it was, um, or Dallin, sorry. Uh, great try assist for Dallin. But, yeah, um, we're, we're, the thing, it's a, it's a, again, it's a kind of weird feeling as a Warriors supporter because at the beginning of the year when we did our preview show, we kind of spoke about we, we, we were struggling to see where our points were going to come from based on how we played last year. But now mm. we've just got points all over the park. Um you know, mm. guys, guys running great holes. Uh, Sean's playing a, a brand of football that we've never seen him play before. Um, he's always been like a highlight real player, but now he's playing with a smart head, uh, playing with a lot mm. of patience. His kicking game is is outstanding, best in the competition. Uh, probably Adam Reynolds is probably the only person with a kicking game that matches what Sean's doing. And then, um, but the other thing we have to talk about too is it's it's because we've, we've had some injuries this year and we had guys come through, but it's a, that next man up mentality that's kind of really worked for us. Like, you know, a guy like mm-hmm. Metcalf, we ran into at um, uh, Belmore a couple of weeks ago when he was playing reserve grade before he made his debut for the Warriors against the Broncos game. But he's come in and hasn't missed a beat. Um, you know, Tamari Martin at the beginning of the year. Um, yeah, we're, we're very lucky that the squad that we've got are just really clicking and you, you can only put that down to Andrew Webster. Uh, Andrew Webster's just instilled so much belief in these guys uh, and the, in the way that they play. Um, and it's exciting. It's exciting as a Warriors supporter because we haven't had this since mm. probably since 02, 03 when we, when we were a dominant side. You know, 2011, we kind of snuck into the, the finals and 2018 was kind of a dominant first start, but we kind of fell away towards the end of the year. But this year, we're, we've just, it's just, yeah, it's something different. Um, great to be a Warriors supporter. Oh, how good is it to be? A Warriors, or Waz, whatever you, <laughs> the way you skin it. Um, yeah. Moneta, uh, it's, it's, it is in a way, um, something completely different because it's a different sort of, um, you know, Warriors style of play. But Andrew Webster said during the week, you know, he wanted to make sure when he came here, he didn't just try and copy and paste from Penrith. Um, would it be fair yeah. to say that he's kind of taken a lot of, a lot of that, you know, success? And maybe he just adapted it to the players that he's got at the Warriors. Yeah, I was reading an article just about him like a week ago, and that was the number one thing he said that you know he wouldn't come over and replicate what he had done in Penrith. And I think you remember back to Kearney uh, when he came in. I think he kind of tried to do the same, you know, when he was working in the Storm system. But um, I think the number one thing that he's done and they speak about a lot is he's instilled confidence and belief within all the players. Um, you know, you hear about Jackson Ford coming over from St George. You know, he couldn't get onto the bench, and now he's a full, you know, minute, your full eighty-minute player. You know, and he's he's having a blinder. Um, look at Sean Johnson; he's come back now, and like you know, he's just a totally different player. And um, he's turned over people that weren't wanted, like you know, Barnett, CNK. CNK played New South Wales last year. You know, he wasn't wanted, and now look at him now; he's. So I think what he's done is actually created belief in everybody and confidence, and uh, it's showing because with the number of you know players having career best form and AFB, oh, the you know, the list can go on actually. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Isaac, one thing that was well, I thought was really good about our game on Friday was our work around the kicks. A, when we had the ball, we were kicking it long, we were using the wind to our advantage, placing the kicks well. Uh, but also on defense, we seemed as though we were actually pretty rock solid 
you know, diffusing the bombs and, and whatnot, by and large, apart from one piece of brilliance towards the end there by Jordan Rapana. But um, what are you seeing uh, in terms of our kicking game and, and on the defensive side as well? That kicking game is so simple. I mean, it, it happens week in, week out. Sean Johnson's just plugging for the corners, and I'm sure the other teams know what's going to happen. But it's just really hard to get any momentum when you're stuck in the corner. Warriors draw those first two or three tackles and trap them there. And it happens week after week after week. And I guess that's why Sean Johnson's so good at it, because he knows it's a pretty simple game plan, and it's just rinse, wash, repeat. And obviously the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. And it seems to be every single week he's getting better and better at that. Plus he's got a different... He's got a different array of kicks if he needs them, like this little pooch kick that just goes over the top of the line. It's not going to straight to the hand of the winger, but by and large, it's just a pinpoint bomb to the corner. In terms of the kick defusal, um, you, you know, you probably would have seen that, um, geez, what's his name, the halfback for the, um, the, the Raiders, what? Jamal Fogarty. Oh, yeah. He put up some absolute screamer, yeah. Matt oh, Burton-style yeah. spiral torpedo bombs. Yeah. And there was one particular uh, bomb where Dallin just swallowed it, and he was yeah. surrounded by players, and he just swallowed it. And I was like, fuck, somebody's going to drop this one, and he didn't. So I don't think people understand how hard it is to catch that, but to have the confidence just to swallow that and then get a good 5, 10-meter run, I mean, it's just all confidence, like Manure's point. The, the players have got confidence and belief in their own abilities. It's no wonder they're all having career best years because they are playing to their full potential. Yeah, for mm. sure, man. Um, now, uh, Rue, you uh, alluded to the fact that during the middle section of the game, we lost our way a little bit. Mm. Um, you could probably put an argument as well that potentially the refs might have lost their way uh, <laughs> during that sort of period as well. Um, the uh, I guess in, in particular... What uh, Ricky Stewart was uh, really unhappy with after the game was he thought a penalty try should have been awarded for uh, for Dallin's little just facial <laughs> caress yes. of uh, of Sebastian Chris. <laughs> How did you see that one, bro? Did you think that that was um, was to that level of a penalty try? Not at all. It's just a great, just a fantastic bloody try saver. That's how yeah. I saw it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Ricky Stewart is Ricky Stewart. We know he's going to whinge about something. Never, never likes to blame his own players. It's always either the ref or the opposition. So, um, yeah, look, I, I just thought it was just a, it was just a massive play from Dallin. Pretty much indicative of the way that teams playing at the moment. Never give up, you know. Always, always, you know. Um, yeah, the more defensive minded as well this year, and the way that we've been saving tries, like particularly with Chance at the back there. He's, he's come up with some great stops and. Um, yeah, it was just a fantastic play. So I don't know what Ricky's on. <laughs> it was it was the, the most gentle of caresses. Across yeah, the it was, there was nothing in it. Absolutely nothing in it. So, he was applying yeah. the moisturizer or something yeah. like that. It's a, to, uh, a careless whisper. That's what it was. <laughs> 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 uh, now, uh, Hammer, uh, another refereeing bone of contention. This one was maybe the other way. Uh, the Corey Horsburgh incident. Uh, where he was the third man in and uh, just basically, you know, completely took... Uh, he, he took out Curran, but looking at the replay as well, he very, very nearly got Sean's arm caught right in between them as well. So that could have that could have been interesting if he'd done some damage there. But how did you see that one? But I always thought third man in was a sin bin. Like, that, that's that's how I've always viewed that. Um, I, I, was, I thought he was very lucky to stay on the field. Uh, big Red seeing the Red Mist. Um, but it's the Waz, mate. It's the Warriors. We don't we don't get those calls go our way. I can tell you now, if that was Jazz Tavanga or if that was uh, Murata Niakore running in and doing that, they would have sat sat him down, put him ten in the bin. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I was I was surprised he didn't get ten in the bin. Um, but you know, uh, but then again, I'm I'm not surprised uh, because <laughs> yeah, the referees never give us any joy in that kind of thing, do they? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> now that was um, yeah it started to get a little bit heated at different patches I, I to be honest um, I think a lot of us will potentially think that the Raiders you know they, they really put in on Friday night they they came mm -hmm. and gave it a really good crack um, and that's that's you know that's them that's their identity they, they'll they go on right to the end um, except on the games where they just badly fade away but um, Moneta that final quarter um, 
feel like we we probably just I don't know if we were sitting on the lead or not. We're up twenty to six at that point, uh, and maybe we just started to just perhaps try and defend the lead. What do you think about that? I do think there was a level of complacency, but I do think the Raiders were you know you know we're just chasing harder at the end, at the end. You know, um, nothing to lose really, and um, you know. They scored that try in the corner, which I thought was offside. Um, but anyways, <laughs> that's another story. Um, <laughs> Didn't and then they scored him. that blinder at the end of White and doing that big dive, and I was like, damn it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was really happy Croker missed it. I thought it was one of those redemption stories he was going to get. And I was like, uh-oh. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, and I think, yeah, we hit, it was complacent, but I think we showed a bit more steel in overtime. And, um, yeah, and we, you know, Tohu Harris, you know, made that really good breakdown in the right edge. And then, you know, Johnson iced it. Like, come on. You know, he, he it was a hard one, actually, too. You know, he had red mist coming around the corner mm. and um, you know, nearly nearly got him, and he just poked it through, which is fantastic. And if, that's to my point, I thought Ricky should have picked on the fact that they mucked up the last kick. Um, yes, you know, seven tackles like, set. Yeah, you know, yep. Yep. yeah. Set, rather huge, than yeah, yeah you know, because that was a huge play and it gave him that seven. So, yeah. I think at the end of it, um, and to uh, you know Hammer's point, I thought you know we needed a game like that, and uh, I thought you know we showed showed resolve and resilience. So yeah, you yeah, bring up one point though as well, and in that, in that extra time. Honestly, I thought the Warriors made it look so easy and so clinical to get up the field, yeah. get into mm-hmm. position. And slot the drop goal like that mm. actually actually made me feel really good to mm. see that yeah. in that sort of situation mm. when you know the heat's on they were just cool calm work they would have the field and just made it look too easy it looked it never looked like they were going to miss you know what i mean or not get into position they just marched up the field and you knew it was going to be sean johnson and he still slotted it from a mile out they made it look too easy yeah, for I, sure. I did get it nervous because that was the first time I saw Webster out of the box. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah, sure. Angry, Angry Dad, dad hey. <laughs> Angry Dad like, came down. Like, I'm in the box going, mm-hmm. But this time he was out like, with the, you know, walk talkie And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, doing a bellamy. Yeah, yeah. He was, it was the Angry oh. Dad moment. He's like, don't make me come down there. What are you kids doing? <laughs> 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 he was on the, old, the walkie-talkie going, oi, sort this out, guys. Um, but uh, Rue... Um, Obviously, we mentioned that you know it was it was great for us to have a sensational set in Golden Point and just make it look like a almost like a training run. Um, but how how were they able to absorb all of the momentum going against them right at the end? We led in two tries in about seventy seconds. How do you recover from that? Because they looked a bit shell shocked, and I think a lot of us were as well. But they were able to just flick that switch. Obviously, uh, Webster had gone down and, and had a word as well. But how did they turn that around in such a quick time? Yeah, I, I must admit, they cut to a shot of AFB straight as soon as um, full time was blown to go into Golden Point. And he sort of was like shaking his head. He looked like the sort of body language wasn't looking real positive. Um, it reminds me of like all those times in the past, particularly in that. Remember that finals game, that well, one finals game we played in 11 years when Roger went down with an injury and you could collectively see the whole team drop their heads. And you're like, this is not good. Um, and yeah, look, the final game of last year, so we've brought up a number of times when that went, ended up going to the golden point. You're like, yeah, we know we're done here because we just didn't have, we just didn't have the mental toughness to push through that. But this year we've got it. We, we've definitely got it. Um, yeah, we, we just, yeah, a whole, a completely new team, completely new outlook, uh, completely new mental resolve, and yeah, the boys just obviously pulled together and said, like, we we haven't lost, we're still in this, and we've we've got a chance to win it. And I'll, again, I will put that all down to to Webster and what he's been able to do in such a short period of time because Warriors mm-hmm. teams in the past just haven't had that mental toughness. We haven't had that in so many years. So that that was just that was the biggest thing for me to take out of this game and the most encouraging point for me. Is that we we essentially we all basically got beaten um, in a game that we had sewn up, but then we were able to pick ourselves up on the canvas and um, get the job done. And uh, it looks as though uh, I think Mark's having a bit of a connection problem there, yeah. so uh, hopefully you'll jump back in. Um, but it, it is it's it's such a it's a marvel that Webster is able to come in mentally. 
Uh, oh, here he is. I think he's back. Is he coming back? Is he... There he goes. There Sorry, he is. He's... No, he's, he's back into it. Uh, bro, we were just talking about, um, you know, the amazing uh, work that, you know, Webster has done. Not even in the, you know, the, the coaching side of things, the, uh, you know, the, um, you know, moves and whatnot, but just what he's done with this team mentally. He's, he's remade this team. They are, they are a strong unit and something that we've never really seen from a Warriors side. Yeah, it's, um, it's been an amazing turnaround, uh, really, when you think about it. Like, and you go back to last season. Um, you know, I think we only won six games all season, uh, and a lot of the it's a lot of the same personnel that we've got this year. There's obviously seven or eight new guys that have come in, but Webster kind of just said to them at the beginning of the year, "It's a reset. Like, forget about all the old stuff. This, this is a different Warriors. We're a new side. Um, we don't carry all the baggage from from history with us." And I think, um, yeah, he's obviously bought some great systems uh, with him from Penrith as well. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a real man manager, and it's one thing that we like. We we were lucky enough to fortunate enough to interview him at the beginning of the year, and I, I just found him to be really calm, really placid, um, really controlled in the way that he speaks, uh, and I think that goes a long way in in having the guys uh, have the trust in him uh, as well. And you 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 listen to him speak at the post match press conferences, and he's always he's. His responses are always honest, but they're always measured. Um, you know, he doesn't get carried away. He doesn't get flustered. Uh, he talks really honestly, and he's, he's very clear and concise about what um, the job is at hand. And I think that helps with the way that our boys have, have been able to play this year. Uh, yeah, he's... It's funny, isn't it? Because, like, when they signed him last year, everyone was thinking Cameron Serraldo was the better of the two Penrith assistants, and we got the raw end of the deal, but... Mate, this guy is absolutely fantastic. Um, and, you know, it's, it's no secret that, um, you know, we all class Ivan Clear is probably the, the best coach that the Warriors have had in our history. But uh, this guy, even even with only, you know, 20-odd games under his belt, is a very close second at the moment uh, with the way that he's got us humming. Uh, it's exciting times. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, a lot of... A lot of- Coach of the Year check going around and and a hundred percent fair enough as well. I think he's he's got to be looking pretty short odds to scoop that. Uh, now in terms of those post match interviews, uh, Moneta, you've got a bit of a uh, a bone to pick with the current situation, uh, with the fact that there's no players, there's no players talking to us after the game, bro. Uh, how uh, how heartbroken are you at the moment? I mean, I think after moments like that, you always want to hear like because they're full of adrenaline. Those kind of player interviews after. And I, for, I forgot they were going on the, you know, on the strike, you know, at PA strike. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I can't wait to hear. And the next minute, oh, it's over. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. They, they, you know, the players go for the strike, but it would have been great to hear some of those interviews, and uh, especially after a close match like that, because um, yeah, it would have been a great one to hear. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, Isaac, uh, I know that we did great in that, um, you know, the golden point period leading up to the field goal. Just textbook stuff, even how we, you know, we, we positioned ourselves beautifully on that second to last tackle and Adam went to the left and passed it back. Uh, also, Corey Horsburgh was, wasn't square at Mark. I'm just going to say that uh, on that <laughs> play, that Ricky, if, there, yeah. if you're listening, but I'm just going to throw that in there. Um, but I think one thing we'll need to look at, and I know that the, the coaches will be thinking about this, is that. If you've got a four-point lead and you're in a really crunch game and you've only got about 45 seconds to defend the opposition right from down their goal line, uh, what sort of um, you know training or, or visualisation will the Warriors be doing uh, to just try and rectify that from, from happening uh, again? Oh, jeez. I mean, <laughs> I thought it was fairly obvious that we're going to go up the middle a few times and then go wide. And to be perfectly honest, we all love DWZ and his try-scoring feats this year. But we hadn't seen it in a while where he just got left in no man's land out on the wing. For The numbers are there, but somehow he still got left out in no man's land. So I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but it did lead to the try that got us to, to golden point. Is that he needs to figure that out. <laughs> At the start of this year, he was getting skinned on the outside uh, a lot. Um, and I don't feel like, yeah, 
I can't see how he got into no man's land. So I don't think it's a team thing. They had the right idea. They were executing. They knew they were going to go out wide, and to still get skinned out wide like that is just not a good thing to see. But yeah, I don't think there's too much they can they can really work on. It's um, it's just executing really in those sorts of situations. Even if he just whips his hair to get in the way of the ball, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the ruling on that would be if if it's a, a knockdown or yeah. Surely it can't be a knock on off off your own here. Um. <laughs> he went in on on nobody. He kind of yeah. went. You got to go all. You got to go all or nothing. If you're going to go in, you got to go all in. If you're going to stay back, stay back. That's cool. He kind of just went, took a half step forward, and he got turned inside out. Mm. I was like, oh, that's not a good look <laughs> on <Yeah>. defense. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah, yeah certainly was. Uh, um, was a bit of a sinking feeling for a lot of fans. Uh, mm. In fact, that game on Friday night was actually the second result of 21-20 Warriors over Canberra. Uh, the New South <laughs> Wales Cup guys had a big win. That's a, that's a, that's a big win for them uh, as well because those two teams are right in the thick of things for uh, the top five. Only Hold the top up. five in New South Wales Cup, so yep. um, so that's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Um, so the Warriors currently sitting in fourth. Uh, next game, they've actually got a big one against Penrith. Um, who are coming on strong? They uh, they played uh, in a game on Sunday, and uh, yeah, they they tailed up the uh, the Bulldogs. Um, fortunate enough to commentate that game, so got to see it firsthand. So the Warriors have definitely got their uh, work cut out for them um, next week. But lads, um, t- give us a, um, give us your sort of insight on things. Um, we'll start with you, Root, because someone mentioned on our, um, our Warriors Anonymous group during the week that. As we've got a bit of a easier draw coming up, we've got the bye and then you know five games against sort of lesser teams, shall we say? No easy games, but lesser. Um, they have suggested that uh, we we try and rest some guys like Toku Harris, Wade Egan, Jackson Ford, guys with big workloads, um, Chans as well. Um, Rue, what's your thoughts on how to go about that? It's it's kind of like the you know, the, the rest and, and look after your guys versus, you know, losing your edge perhaps with your combinations. What do you reckon? Yeah, a bit of the old load management, hey? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd want to do it. You'd want to do it carefully. You don't want to lose any momentum, especially at this time of the year. Yeah, as you said, there's no easy games. A couple of games, even in, in our easy run home, that will still test us. I mean, the Titans on the Gold Coast have given us a lot of trouble recent times. Yep. Um, and, you know, finishing off with the Dolphins, who we know are Wayne Bennett coach side, so they're always going to turn up. And then, uh, obviously, against Manly as well. But, yeah, look, I, I'm not a big fan of, of of resting players. Like, if they're fit and ready to go, I'd, I'd have them in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would only be doing it out of necessity. But, yeah, someone like Tohu, who's got, you know, um, a bit of a history. Yeah, maybe against, like, the Dragons or the, the Tigers, you could give him a the rest because there's plenty of guys in there that can step up. We've got great depth um, pretty much across the board um, this year, which is great. And, yeah, there's guys that can come in and, and fill that position if needed and have done the job in the past, which has been good. Yeah, yeah for sure. Even uh, just resting Tohu for a couple of games will save the uh, the team costs on tape alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's Elastic mummified West. out there, the old boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. Poor guy. <laughs> Um, Hammer, bro, how do you uh, how do you think that they will uh, approach the uh, the next five games in terms of personnel? It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, we got the bye this week, so everyone gets a rest anyway. Uh, but a, as Rob said, a guy like um, Tor who may need a bit of a rest uh, just to freshen up. Uh, he has been carrying that knee injury all, all season, uh, so maybe give him a rest to freshen up in the, maybe that game against the Dolphins or the game before that, which I think is the Dragons um, game. Um, but aside from that, I'm not a big fan of oh, resting yeah. players. Manly, is it? Yeah, I'm. I'm not a big fan of resting players. As as an ex player myself, I hate. I hate it if I if I'd be rested. I think these guys just want to be playing. And the other thing for us too is it's it's new territory for us. Where I actually think that we can finish top two. The the Broncos have a bit of a harder run. They play mm-hmm. uh, the Eels. They've got Penrith. They've got the Storm in their last uh, couple of games, and the Cowboys. Um, so I, I actually think the Broncos may drop a couple of games. Uh, and we should be looking at a top. We're sitting three now. We should be looking at a top two finish, and that'd be outstanding if we if we could get a home semi final in round one of the semis. And I think that's something that that even though Webster might not admit it, I think that's something that they've got one eye on at the moment is uh, maybe a top two finish and and setting themselves up for a uh, to go deep into the final series. Um, 
I, I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb now too, and I'm going to say that I pick, I pick the Warriors Cowboys as the uh, NRL Grand Final for this year. That's where, how I think it's going to finish. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a bloody show stuff? A holy Battle moly! Of hey, oh, hey, man, hey. oh man, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all you need is the uh, the crushers and the western reds for the uh, the curtain raiser and that'd be, be all on but... Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> now um now lads uh obviously uh i guess from our perspective here at warriors anonymous bringing you guys on it's, it's a little bit like talking to rugby league royalty in a sense uh you guys were the the og the uh the original uh you know podcasters uh you know involved with the warriors um, Rue, um, how you know how did the how did the podcast come around, man? Yeah, yeah, good question. Well, it, it was it was smack bang in the middle of 2020, so right in the middle of COVID. And um, Mark, Mark and I had been part of a, a group called Warrior Nation. Uh, you would know very well, Jared. Um, Indeed, headed by Richie Morgan. Shout out to you, Rich. Um, and we, we were in a chat group, and and one day we just we just kind of chatted on the side. We just had our own like separate little chat. Is we, we kind of, um, yeah, we're talking about a few things that were going on at the club at the time. And then, um, yeah, we, it, that just led to us like, FaceTiming once a week. So on the Teamless Tuesday, we would just chat. And at this point in time, we never actually met in person. Um, we, we only had like a, it was a typical COVID thing. You know, we, <laughs> we were just, we're just chatting, um, via FaceTime and we sort of said, what we're talking about kind of feels like a podcast. Like we we're just talking about all things warriors, about past, present, and that sort of thing. And so, I wonder how you do a podcast. I wonder how you do that. And because we had no, we we neither of us had any idea on how to do that. And we just sort of looked into it. And um, so we started off doing it on Zoom, and we went on the Zoom, and we figured we could do Zoom on the Facebook and, and and that kind of thing. And well, honestly, if you go back and watch our first show, it is embarrassing <laughs> because we had no <laughs> idea what we were doing. Um, some some may say we still don't have any idea what we're doing, uh, but you go back and watch it. And I think we've come a long way there, and um, since then, and we've been very lucky. Um, the people that we've met through it has been been fantastic. People like like yourselves and so many other um, Warriors content creators that, that we've met over the, the past three years, and we, we've we've been lucky enough to have a very good relationship with the club, and we've been. The biggest buzz for me is is just you know we we reached out to some players we've been able to chat to some past players and present players and that's always like a massive buzz and um yeah like I, a couple of times I just had to pinch myself particularly when we're talking to Steve Price Stacey Jones um just just such a buzz because it was just such a fanboy you know um never in my wildest dreams that I thought this would happen but yeah here we are and um yeah it's been a fantastic ride um. It, it's been so awesome. Yeah, it really has. Yeah, awesome, bro. It's it's funny. Uh, I know the Sauce Boys will agree with me here. A lot of what you were saying about, you know, sort of starting out, chatting, let's make it into a podcast. We have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. It, it, it's you know all I mean? very familiar <laughs> to us, bro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and likewise, we're sort of like a little bit sort of cringy about going back to the, the, the very first episodes. Um, but uh, but yeah, re- really cool, awesome story. Um now, uh, Rue mentioned, um, you know, you had a couple of special sort of interviews of Stacey and Steve Price. That Steve Price interview was bloody awesome, I thought. Uh, but, Mark, bro, what was um, – have you had any sort of particular favourites out of the, the people that you've spoken to? Oh, Mark Graham was a favourite of mine. I, I grew up uh, – like, I'm a lot older than you blokes, and, and I grew up in uh, watching Mark Graham play for the Bears in the 80s. I was a Bears supporter, went to school in the in the area. So to be able to get Mark Graham on and have a chat to him, that was something that was a, a bit surreal and pretty special for me. Um, but one that really stands out for me is um, we got Ivan Cleary on just after the Panthers won their first premiership. And to be able to – for him to give up his time to talk to two nufties about his time is pretty pretty amazing his phone cut out midway through the conversation and we were able to get him on at the beginning of last yeah. year to kind of finish off the interview which was pretty good um so that's that's a favorite and then there's guys uh top funny stories and empty uh funny stories but uh we've been very fortunate um as we said, to some really great connections and uh everyone that we've spoken to has, has been uh, just absolute champions, and um, you know, we we spoke to Webster at the beginning of this year, and, and Cappy, and we're really excited that we get to to speak to uh, Dylan Walker 
on Tuesday night. Um, he's giving up his time to, to come and chat to us. So really looking forward to that because it's what it's probably the one thing that we enjoy doing the most with what we able to do. It's all very well that we can. Yeah. We all seem to talk about the Warriors games and uh, stuff like that. But um, we it was the thing that kind of set us apart from everyone else when we when we started was that we had this connection where we we would kind of just be able to get these players on and have a chat to them. And it, it allowed them, it was like a forum to allow them to tell their story because all the questions we yes. ask are just really open-ended about their career. And and it allows them to, to just talk as much or as little as possible about what they want to do, what, what, what they have. And like we've had guys on like Jermaine Tanoa Brown and Chanel Harris-Tavuda who were maybe an hour-long conversations. And Steve Price came on and he was on for three hours. Um <laughs> that night, and we actually had to cut that into three different segments to put it up on YouTube so people would watch it because because no one's going to watch a three hour conversation. Um, but yeah, we, we've been very fortunate, very lucky, um, and sometimes you just got to pinch yourself <laughs> when when you're uh, when you're talking yeah. to these guys uh, because you know we we all grow up watching them and and the current players we love watching them we watching them play now um yeah it's a, a kind of a pinch yourself moment but um but we we feel like it's just our platform is able to bring that to the people that follow us. So it's not so much us interviewing those players. It's providing a service for everyone that follows us that they can actually listen to the stories of these great players that have played for us. Yeah, nice, man. So in case anyone's been watching and and wondering, um, uh, Hammer's internet connection is fine. We just added a few effects on there to... To get the realism of the, you know, you mentioned about the the phone call cracking out and that, and it was just as you were cracking out as well. So it was like, oh yeah, sweet, that's 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 all. For good. Once it's not mine. <laughs> oh, now he's falling off. Came modem strikes again. Bring <laughs> energy. Uh, Rue, have you had any um, particular disasters? I guess is probably the word to use. Yeah. Oh, disasters. Oh, uh, well, probably the biggest disaster we had was we. So we we'd organised to have a chat to Stacey Jones. Um, and it, we were going to pre-record it on a Saturday morning. And we had him all lined up and we only had him for about an hour because he had to go to training. So we had to make it really quick. And anyway, of course, technology completely failed us. We couldn't get him on, we couldn't get him on, on our platform we were using or the restream or anything like that. We ended up having to get him back on Zoom and we just had to rush and chat. But I think that was about a year or two into it. So we were able to sort of think on our feet a little bit better and just sort of adapt. And But we still had a really good chat with him. I mean, Stacey's a man of few words anyway, so I think he probably <laughs> said everything that he is going to. And, um, yeah, like it's it's all like, – I, I just remember the very first time that we chatted to a player was, was Georgia Hale, and I was so nervous <laughs> <laughs> before we did that because I'd never, like, really spoken to anyone, you know, famous before and – when my, well, operating the mouse in my hand it was like literally shaking, but um, yeah, this, the the more like it's like anything, the more you do something, the better you get, and um, yeah, we just we just so lucky and so fortunate, and yeah, we 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 chatted to yeah Warriors players past and present, and they've all got some fantastic stories. Like some of them, like Kevin Campion telling us the the story when um, Nat Wood scared the bejesus out of a young um, Nathan Cleary. Uh, that's that was a good one um like grant ravelli had some great stories george gaddis um jason deeth all these guys like it's just been so awesome to chat back to these guys they they might not have been superstars for the club but i mean they've all got a story and they all just appreciate that everyone remembers that they played footy and um they played for the club so yeah it's, it's been it's been awesome it's been a blessing it's been it's been everything it's just been fantastic yeah awesome bro um now hammer mentioned uh, before you got uh, Dylan Walker, aka yes, Glutes of Doom, on uh, on your next uh, episode. <laughs> Bro, are, are you going to ask him about the uh, the incident he had with uh, Tui Vasashek a couple of years ago? Oh <laughs> yeah, the the, the Daki. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Didn't he do an injury at the same time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. A it wasn't a strained buttock, well. was it? <laughs> strain, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we'll, we'll definitely ask him about that. <laughs> <for sure>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's going to go next year when he comes back. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. we we tend to think. Yeah, training. We're tending to think he um one of the main reasons he signed with the Warriors was of because of how much of a gentleman. Roger was at the time, you know, just giving him a bit of uh, dignity and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> putting the shorts back up. There you go, fella. You're, you're all good. Yeah. Put away the bike yeah. rack. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching this one with the laugh, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. So good. So good. Um, we'll have to put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> if you could find yeah. an image of that on a shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you probably need to, yeah, have like a, a yeah. Dylan Walker on the front and then on the back, Glitz of Doom with the, right. you know, yeah. some blue buttocks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bro, um, oh, what is, um, obviously, you know, can be chatting to Dylan Walker this coming week, which will be which will be awesome. Awesome is what I'm yes. trying to say. Um, but what have you got coming up as well for the uh, you know for the foreseeable future, other than you know attending a grand final uh, this year, which, a, will be, uh, which will be exciting. Exciting. Right. Yeah. What else have you guys got coming up? Yeah, we've got our we've got our usual weekly chats coming up. So we're we're um, usually live on a Wednesday night. Um, so if you want to catch us on YouTube and Facebook and all across social media, like we're talking all things footy, like you boys are. Um, we got a couple of there's a couple of events coming up. So if you guys are on the, anyone is on the Gold Coast, um, I believe there's going to be a function um, to meet up with uh, the players, most possibly before or after the Gold Coast game, and then the final round against the Dolphins. Uh, we'll be back at our one of our favourite venues, the Lord Alfred Hotel, it's on oh. Caxton Street. That's oh. where we first met, Jerry. <laughs> what a place! Oh, yeah. what a time! Remember that uh, well. Yeah. So, I mean, how good was the, the Magic Round event? It's just fantastic. And, and we know that the fans are going to be out in force. Like, mate, that, that, the Titans game, that away members, the way supporters base sold out, you know, in record time. And there's always a big turnout there on the Gold Coast of, of Warriors fans. And it'll be the same in Brisbane for, for the final game against the Dolphins. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. Love getting out there and, and catching up with people and, um, yeah, hopefully maybe get a few ex, ex players along as well. Other than that, yeah, we, we're still we're still making connections. We're hoping to have Dallin on for a chat um, later in the year, some point in time as well, and uh, maybe Charms as well. But we'll we'll see how we go. Yeah, cool, uh, but Yeah, we still we reach out we reach out to you know um, a lot of ex players as well. So we have got a few of those that we we're, we're hoping to get on too. So yeah, doing what we love. It's just yeah, it's brilliant. Now that's mint, bro. I um. I can imagine uh, all you fellas will be there and at the Gold Coast and the Dolphins game, and oh, yeah. Richie will be there from Warrior Nation He'll banging be there the drum. With the drum. Yep. Oh, <laughs> how how good is the drum going? It's on fire lately. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah. But bro, um, I guess yeah. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Um, obviously, um, uh, Mark sort of <laughs> jumped off of the old uh, connection issues there, but um, yep. yeah, really appreciate your guys' uh, time. And um, yeah, man, go. Go well, and um, you will we'll hopefully uh, we'll catch you at the grand final end of this year. Yeah, absolute pleasure, boys. Thanks so much for inviting us on. It's been great to chat with you. Always great to chat, Booty. And um, yeah, I hope to hope to meet the rest of you guys um, at some point as well. So um, yeah, thanks grand again, final. and uh, up the wires. <laughs> Up the wires. 2024, the Lord Alfred's going to... We're going to need both floors next year for the we're Magic gonna need the whole. We're going to need the whole joint, mate. Yep. Yeah. Need, give us the whole block. We'll just, just give us section whole, it well, off. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> nah, awesome, bro. Yep. Thanks very much, man. That no was uh, Thanks, Ruin guys. Hammer. Ruin Hammer Thanks, joining buddy. us on this special episode. The crossover event. <laughs> uh, these uh, these kind of always go a bit shady, but, um, but yeah, it's always good to... To get around and, and meet the uh, the other Warriors content creators as well. So, um, the Sauce Boys, um, you're going to stick around. Uh, Rue's going to jump on out of here. Cheers, brother. See you and later. Um, go get ready to chat to, to D Walker, D Buns. Um, we've got uh, bye week, lads. How are we going to cope, Isaac? <laughs> what, what do you talk about, eh? Well, <laughs> we could just talk about all the positive stuff, can't we? It's better than the previous two years when. <laughs> the bye was a blessing for us because we didn't have to talk about the Warriors losing. <laughs> <laughs> just, be, just being honest, eh? Yeah. But that was good. That was good fun with uh, Ruin Hammer. The, I'm, I'm enjoying the uh, Warvel universe. The uh, <laughs> hey, that's the good. Warvel universe. The multiverse. Yeah, <laughs> Wa- yeah the multiverse or the Bartang clan. <laughs> all, gr- all great names, but yeah, they are yeah. experienced and just successful at what they do because they do good stuff. Bro, those those guys are awesome as well, bro. Just um, networking, getting to meet the players, and that. Um, that's why I'm. That's my real shortcoming is getting out and, you know, I'll sort of see players around, but I'll just be like, oh, just a bit shamed to go up and talk to them. <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, please. it's a hard thing to network. It's not easy uh, for the listeners out there. Yeah, uh, it's, it's you can definitely drop, not. Drop into too many, so many DMs before you uh, get blocked. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> 
But uh, so, we'll have to try and cook up a plan to get um, get all you boys over as well for Magic Round next year because there's going to be magic, man. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Um, but, um, well, we've got uh, we've got a bit of time, obviously, to uh, to just ponder our, our blitz of the Titans, just looking ahead in a couple of weeks as we head over to the Gold Coast. Um, Moneta, what do you think? will be the approach as we head over to take on the uh, the Titanics. I think the buy is probably coming at a good time. Um, you know, we've got a few niggles uh, with some of our players, so like Tohu, obviously. Um, so it's a good time for us just to rest up. And, yeah, I think in terms of game plan, I think it goes back to well, what Isaac said previously. It's all about just execution. So I think, you know, it will be, you know, well-rested players. We go and... Um, you know, get rid of those little kind of niggling uh, injuries and uh, we'll be fresh to go. But I like to, um, I think it was Mark's point, um, let's not take it, take it for granted. I mean, yes, easy run compared to the others, but you never know what could happen. You only have to look at nights, beating the storm, and uh, we were all, you know, most people were thinking storm uh, would take this out. So, and we're playing Manly who took out the Sharks too. So, um, yeah, this is it's execution. So with well-rested players, I think we'll, we'll we'll be all right. Yeah, I think um, having a couple of weeks to just kind of readjust. Uh, I know that they mentioned um, at the last buy that it gives them a bit of an opportunity to just go a little bit deeper on you know perhaps some more creative things or, or whatnot, yeah. just with that extra time up their That's sleeve. But yeah. um, Isaac, uh, we might be getting pretty close. I saw the Warrior Holic mentioned that. Uh, a certain uh, Jazz Tivanga may be close to uh, mm-hmm. returning shortly, but um, very how, how excited are you to see him back into the mix? Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, the Warrior Holic put up on on um, on the Facebook page, you know, the top seventeen who you'd pick, and Jazz is definitely one of those players you'd pick in the seventeen. Um, but yeah, the buy comes at a good time, gives them a bit of time to reflect on what the hell happened on Friday with Golden <laughs> Point. I mean, could have gone either way. We could have lost it. Um, at least we're re- reflecting with the win. Um, and, yeah, welcome some troops back. But, yeah, the Gold Coast game I'd be pretty nervous about because it could be a banana skin. And, you know, it, it, all it takes is one game for the tide to turn and we could lose momentum going into, this, into the finals. I mean, I think it's a lock that we're an eight. But I think, um, you know, Mark made a good point that Webby's probably got his eye on top two, you know, to make sure that we get a home semi. Because if we get a home semi with the amount of groundswell and the amount of support the Warriors have got this year, um, having a home semi-final at positioned at number two would be massive for the for the team, massive for the club, massive for the fans. And we could just ride that wave all the way through the grand final. I know it's looking a little bit far ahead, but I think that's like end game right there um, is a top two finish. Yep. Um, so the whole resting the players thing uh, as well to that point, <laughs> I can see some value in doing it a little bit maybe for the likes of Tohu, um, keeping him fresh into that final series and giving guys like Tavanga who haven't had much game time, getting them into the, into the groove of it. Um, because Tohu's a professional, he can he could skip some games, jump back in the team without missing a beat. Mm. But Tavanga, I think, would probably need a little bit more time to get the match fitness going. Um, you know, get some runs under his belt, and there might be an opportunity to, um, you know, give a bit of game time. Maybe rotate a couple of people in the spine. Maybe give Metcalf a break. I mean, the season's long. There's still quite a few games to go. Chuck TMM in. You know, get him ready if needed. Um, but yeah. It's a tough one about the whole rotation thing. You always want your number one team on the park, but I could see some a little bit of value in it at this time of year for some players. And it's it is an interesting one. Just thinking maybe from the players' perspective that they're going to be careful as well. They don't want to uh, you know have a rest for a couple of weeks. Uh, I kind of think back to like Ed Cossey earlier in the season. He was going great guns, um, and you know got injured for a few weeks. Dallin comes in. Everyone was a bit unsure how it was going to go. And then you know now you know the rest is history. So it's it's hard to you know hard to get your spot back sometimes if you uh, if you do get a couple of weeks yeah. off. But um, uh, we we've got to wrap things up. Um, it's been a uh, been a fun filled episode, fellas. Uh, lots of good vibes. Um, and yeah, now we just got to fill in the next couple of weeks. 
and we'll just go listen to up the wires a few times something like that um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been Warriors Anonymous. Um, join us on the Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can subscribe and follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Just onto YouTube as well. Um, shout out to uh, Rainy Girl. Uh, she was subscriber number 100. Been following us on Spotify and uh, said she thought she'd uh, jump on on YouTube as well. Up the Warriors. That was the uh, exact uh, phrasing. So uh, shout out to Rainy Girl. Uh, and and all of our um you know subscribers and and members it's it's really awesome to have you on board and man it's just an awesome time to be uh, fans of the Warriors isn't it oh man oh man uh, so my name is Jared Cronin this has been Warriors Anonymous on behalf of Moneta Sos Isaac Sostradamus uh, and also um, Daniel Fadakura who's out at the FIFA Women's World Cup uh, this evening uh, we'll see you guys next week we'll we'll find something to talk about we'll find some fun and games to be had trust me uh, but until then take it easy. And, uh, yeah, up the was, and you know it. Go the Warriors! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>